Good day and welcome to another edition of Outdoor Adventures Radio with host Gary Howie. I'm Simon Fuller. Good day, Gary. A new week, that means a new adventure. What are we going to be talking about today and throughout the week? You know, generally this time of year, it's uh, it's super hot. Uh, weather gets hot, you got to figure out where the fish are at. And in order to do this, you know, I've kind of uh, checked with a bunch of the the guides, the people we work with, and uh, what's going on and, and how they're fishing. So, you know, a lot of times when you're out there, you know, you know where the fish are at, but, you know, this time of year they could be deep, and how are you going to find them? So this is why I check with the guides along the Missouri River because they've got some good insight on, on the, where the fish are this time of year and just how, how to uh, go after them. Yeah, fishing 101, Gary, is first thing we've got to do is find the buggers before we even have a shot at putting a presentation in front of them that uh, that's going to work. And you know, there is a lot of useful information, and the people that do this day in and day out, boy, they're good. Uh, they're, they're a good starting point. Yeah, you bet they are. Not too long ago, there was a tournament on Lewis and Clark Lake, and, and the water temperatures at that time were 75, 77 degrees. And in order to uh, get to those fish in that channel, which is not real deep water, but it's the deepest water in that losing Clark Lake. They used uh, lead core and uh, snap weights to get down down that deep, and then they ran uh, planer boards off to the side, which spreads those lines out. Uh, if that's what it takes, you know, it's not a method a lot of people know a lot about. It's not a method that a lot of people use, but, you know, on, on that tournament, they, they had to do something different. That lead core line, which is pretty popular this time of year, is, is what it t- took to win that tournament. You do what it takes based on the cards Mother Nature deals. Look forward to talking more about this tactic, Gary, as well as hearing about some of the tips and tactics directly from some other specialists, some guides that are in the South Dakota area as the week rolls on. Thank you for the info. Thank you for joining us and to our fine sponsors of Outdoor Adventures Radio. Good day and welcome to another edition of Outdoor Adventures Radio with host Gary Howie. I'm Simon Fuller. This week we're talking about going after walleye when the water temperatures are hot. That typically means we're fishing deep. Gary, you've got some friends who guide for a living with some great insight and tips that we'll be learning about throughout the week. Yeah, you bet. Uh, Joel Vosick, he's one of our team members like you are, Simon. Uh, he's a guide out of that Gettys area, Missouri Valley Guide Service, and he fishes Lake Francis Case primarily on up to Chamberlain. And he feels that uh, deep water walleyes are used to pattern. And he's fishing 30 to 50 feet. But the key there, as long as the bait fish have moved down, the, the predator fish have to move with them. And just uh, as they did on Lewis and Clark Lake, to get down to those uh, deep water walleyes, they're using lead core snap riggers and then sometimes uh, down riggers. He also uses those offshore planer boards uh, with the lead cores. When he makes the turns, you know, that's when a lot of the, the bites come, give him, give him an idea, you know, just uh, what speed he needs to do to, uh, to be at and, and how to fish him. Like all predators, predator fish, they've got to follow their, you know, basically their food. And when the gizzard chat moves, some of the walleyes move with them, some don't. But in summer, they don't seem to like chasing baits. And when the odds are in your favor, that's when crankbaits work well. And there's because there's less uh, bait fish for them to feed on, they've used them all up. You know, he runs uh, 45 to 55 feet just above those trees. And at 1.8 or 2.1 miles per hour, those crankbaits and with lead core uh, rise up above that uh, water table and get those baits down where you need them. We'll hear more about Joe Vasek and some of his tips and tactics in tomorrow's show and some more of Gary's friends in the guiding world as the week rolls on. Thank you so much for the great information, Gary. Thank you as well for joining us today. And to our fine sponsors who make Outdoor Adventures Radio possible Monday through Saturday. Until next time, may your adventures be great. Good day and welcome to another edition of Outdoor Adventures Radio with host Gary Howie. I'm Simon Fuller. This week we're talking about going after walleye in the heat of the summer. Some of the tips and tactics Gary's learned along the way from fellow guides in the industry, he's sharing those tips with us. Today we continue talking about some of those from Joel Vasek. Yeah, as you go down, you know, deeper, as you know, the, you know, the light penetration isn't as good as it is higher up. And that's when he, you know, he uses some big, what he calls intrusive baits, you know, five to six inch uh, style 700 in a reef runner, so a big banana bait. They've got a really wide wobble, which, you know, gives off more vibration and helps those fish down below where the where visibility isn't the best to locate that bait. And Gary, in terms of uh, when you're going that deep, Again, he's using the lead core. What what's his setup look like, rod and reel wise? Well, he uses a big uh, high capacity 
bait casting type reel, line counter reel. He likes to use that 18 pound lead core, and he puts about an 8 to 10 foot leader out in front of it. So if there is a, enough visibility where the fish can see it, uh, that monofilma leader is a lot harder to see than that lead core would be. All right. So he is. Uh, he's going after the deep while he says no summer heat's going to slow me down, and and he's had a lot of success doing this, Gary. Oh, you bet. He, he and his guides fished that uh, Francis Case Chamberlain area day in and day out, and they produce a lot of fish uh, year in, year out. Uh, these methods have worked for them, and if, when they don't, uh, he and his guides spend enough time out there to figure out what the new pattern might be. And that's Joel Vasek, uh, South Dakota, Missouri Valley Guide Service. You can check out all that info, Gary, about he and his successes at walleyetamer.com. Joel the Walleye Tamer, Gary. You bet. He, like, he, he likes to tame those walleye, and he can do it. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. Thank you for joining us and to our sponsors of Outdoor Adventures Radio. Good day and welcome to Outdoor Adventures Radio with host Gary Howie. I'm Simon Fuller. This week we're talking about going after walleye in the dog days of summer and getting some tips and tactics from Gary Howie's friends in the industry. We learned some tips from Joel Vasek yesterday, Gary. We'll hear some tips from another one of your guiding friends today. Yeah, you bet. Ken Hutchinson's up at Pier Hutch's Guide Service. You know, he, uh, he guides Pier South Dakota on down to Chamberlain and uh, in the summer he he fishes deep just using live live bait rigs, basically, but he beefs up his, the bait he puts on him. He uses creek chubs, which are just uh, quite a bit bigger. Uh, they're also a more oily fish, so they, they leave off quite a scent trail. Or he'll double up two big fathead minnows if he can't get the chub. But uh, one thing he, he likes to mention is if you're fishing deep, you know, you, you're bringing those fish out of deeper water, you never know what you're going to catch, and if you want to, Make sure that uh, the fish is alive or releasable when you get him to the top. You want to bring him up slow up from that deep water so they don't blow their bladder out. But, uh, you know, he also uses leeches, and he, he fishes them more slowly this time of year, fishing along the break line, uh, and he fishes, uh, tries to find those fish, you know, in shallow water, 30 foot or less, but if uh, it's deeper, he, he'll go deeper. Kent Hutchinson out of Pier, South Dakota, Hutch's Guide Service. He can be found online at fishinghutch.com, F-I-S-H-I-N-G-H-U-T-C-H dot com. So some similar characteristics in term of the depth that he's going, Gary, but he's just got a different method of presentation, and it's worked well for him. Yeah, you bet. I fish with him uh, throughout the year, and he's got it figured out in that area. Again, he's one of those guys that spends years and years and years on that water, and he, he knows it like the back of his hand. Thanks again, Gary, for passing some of that information along from your friend Kent Hutchison, and thank you for joining us today and to our fine sponsors who make Outdoor Adventures Radio possible. Have a great day. Good day and welcome to another edition of Outdoor Adventures Radio with host Gary Howie. I'm Simon Fuller. This week, Gary's been sharing information from some of his guide friends about going after walleye in the dog days of summer. Today, some tips from Chuck Kraus. Yeah, Chuck's risen from my hometown of Watertown, so I've known him for years, and for years and years he's been uh, guiding on that uh, Lake Hawaii uh, up above here. But he will go down below if needed, but he follows the fish, and uh, they follow the bait fish, so he just believes you got to keep it simple. He doesn't believe in the big, long leader like some of these other guides do. He, uh, he goes to the five- to six-foot leader, and he'll jump around. You know, he might go from crawlers to leeches or leeches to minnows. But he looks for the, you know, the dirtier water because uh, Lake Oahe is, is pretty clear. So, you know, cloudy, murky water is, uh, is a good place for the bait fish to hang out. It's, they like to kind of be in that cooler water. And uh, when the sun doesn't penetrate quite as deep, it's not quite as, hot, as warm down there. But... You know, I fished with him during the heat of the summer many times, and he uses bottom bounces and spinners. He's not exactly fishing like uh, Kent or uh, like Joel does because uh, they don't have the trees, submerged trees like uh, in Francis Case or in Sharp. He fishes more open water, so he fishes the break line uh, where the water drops off into the deeper water. That's where the fish hang out, where it's easy for them to get up to feed and down into the into the depth if uh, they feel threatened or something spooks them. But uh, you know, all three of these guys are excellent, excellent anglers, and they've been guiding for years. So, uh, you know, the information they give me, I've used it over and over again, uh, even when I'm not fishing with them, and they're right on. They they know what uh, what's going on in those areas. Cause they've been there a long time, and they've many fishing the boat for thousands and thousands of uh, 
people that they've guided. Thanks for joining us for Outdoor Adventures Radio. Good day and welcome to another edition of Outdoor Adventures Radio with host Gary Howie. I'm Simon Fuller. It's been a fun week talking about how to catch walleye in the deep waters during the dog days of summer. Gary, you've shared a lot of information from some of your guide friends, Joel Vasek, as well as Kent Hutchison and Chuck Krause, and a lot of great information that hopefully I can take to the boat and catch fish when the water is warm. But one thing I always remember you telling me, Gary, no matter what technique or tactic you use, the one you use the most is the one you'll catch the most fish with. Yeah, use what you've got the most confidence in, Simon. As my grandfather always said, you can't catch fish, your bait is in the water, and then bait that you have in the water the most is going to be what you're going to catch the fish on. Uh, there's some great baits out there. Uh, a smile blade now spinner that uh, they use with a slow death hook in combination with some of this stuff. And if you're using something like that on numerous occasions, uh, you, you're going to gain confidence in it and you're going to catch more fish. All right, Gary. What to do when you're fishing these warm dog days of summer? Some different tactics that came straight from the experts, not only yourself, but three other guys that you put a lot of stock in. Thank you for that great information. And, Gary, so many other outdoor adventures and lots of columns and videos and lots more great stuff can be found 24-7. Yeah, on our website, outdoorsmanadventures.com, or if you're into Facebook, uh, check out uh, Gary Howie's Outdoorsman Adventures. In addition, Gary, love to catch you uh, on this radio show and online, but also on the television. When and where can I do that? Yeah, you bet. Uh, KTTM, KTTW out of Sioux Falls, the Fox affiliate, 6.30 on Saturday morning, and locally on channels 2 and 98, 5.30 in the evening on Friday, and 7 o'clock on Sunday. All right, Gary, as always, appreciate the outdoor adventure and look forward to catching up with you again next week. Hey, Simon, it's always my pleasure. Thank you as well for joining us today and to our fine sponsors who make Outdoor Adventures Radio possible. Have a great weekend.